Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. And happy Father's Day to all dads that are here. God the Father brought you here to himself this day. Now, at the end of Mass, we have a special blessing for all dads and also a special gift. Now, we have a lot to rejoice at today. Yesterday morning, two new priests, Father Elver and Father Shahid, were ordained for the Diocese of Belize. I was able to be at the Holy Redeemer Cathedral yesterday for their ordination. And we thank God for the gift of these new spiritual fathers, these two new laborers for his harvest. Now, last Sunday, I presented you also the dream of trying to make our adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament perpetual here in San Pedro. In other words, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sort of like what they, how they adore God in heaven. And I'm hoping that from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., adoration takes place here at our adoration chapel near the main entrance. If you haven't gone to visit our chapel, it's very beautiful. I encourage you to do that. But then at night, from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., we are hoping that adoration take place in your homes all over San Pedro and Ambergris Cay. Now, to accomplish this dream, last week I introduced to you Pablo Sandoval, a full-time missionary who for 14 years has dedicated himself to establishing perpetual adoration. He will be with us for a couple of months, and once again, after my homily, which is going to be shorter than normal, I've invited him to speak to us today about perpetual adoration. Now, that said, turn with me to today's gospel. Matthew chapter 10, we're going to go to verse 1. It says this, Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them, do you remember what? Authority. Authority. When our Lord Jesus saw this large crowd of people, he saw them, he says, like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, they needed a spiritual leader to shepherd them. And so our Lord Jesus called 12 spiritual leaders, the first one being St. Peter, last one Judas, and he gave them what? Authority. I thank God for the gift of spiritual leaders who have been given Christ's authority. That's how God works. That's how he wants to do his, that's why he wants to grow his church. Today, for Father's Day, I want to focus on the spiritual authority that dads are supposed to have in their families. All of us have some sort of spiritual authority, but dads have a unique type of spiritual authority. But I also want to focus on the type of authority they should not have. Okay, so all biological fathers or fathers of adopted children or even godfathers, could you raise your hand if you're here? Anybody here? Any dads? Thank you very much. Thank you. You as fathers are called by God our Father to be a spiritual leader in your family. This means that God has given you spiritual authority. Now, there is a right way to use that authority, but also a wrong way to use it. I want to start by focusing on five wrong ways to use your spiritual authority as a father. They can actually be hurtful to your children. So the first type of authority that can be hurtful is what I would call a divided authority. Yes, both parents, of course, have authority, but you got to be careful if it's divided. When your children learn that they can play mom and dad against each other, this actually damages kids. Yeah, it's okay for parents maybe to disagree on rules and the disciplines, but not in front of your children. In front of your children, you should have a united authority. For example, all the fathers that are here, please repeat after me the following four words. Your mother and I. Could you repeat that? Your, Your mother, mother and, and I. These are four powerful words against divided authority. When you speak to your children, you speak as your mother and I have decided this or that. That means you are united. Now, the second type of authority that can be hurtful to children is a hypocritical authority. You can't tell your children not to smoke, not to get drunk, not to use drugs or do other bad stuff, if when you have a problem, you turn to the booze. You know, if you're saying one thing, but living another, there's hypocrisy there. And it's time for you to change and be a better dad in that. 
Now, the third type of authority that could be very hurtful is absentee authority. Too many children, including here in San Pedro, are growing up like sheep without a shepherd. Why? Because dad is not around. He's not around. You, can, you cannot effectively exercise your spiritual authority, you know, from a distance or just sort of passing by. You simply have to be at home. You have to spend plenty of quality time with your children. There is no substitute for that. Now, the fourth type of authority that can be hurtful is dictatorial authority. It's when dictator dad, or also dictator mom, by the way, it, that you're, you're, you act like a dictator instead of a dad. You know, God is not a dictator. Our Father God is not a dictator. That's not his style. So the favorite argument of dictator dad usually sounds something like this. Why? Because I said so, that's why. And then they'll hit the, the, you know, the table or something. Well, that's very hurtful, guys. That's, her, that's not God's style. God is not a dictator. He's not, so you can't be a dictator either, okay? Now, the fifth type of authority that is hurtful is manipulative authority. It happens when a dad uses guilt, pain, pouting, lying, the silent treatment, not giving money. I mean, whatever, wor whatever, whatever else works to manipulate your children to do your will. So... Unfortunately, these five types of bad authority, divided, hypocritical, absentee, dictatorial, or manipulation, can actually be resentment in your children. If that's how you act, it could literally build resentment in your children, even lead to hate. Even lead to hate. So you, if you have acted like this in the past, then today, just admit your failure. And then recommit yourself to change. And to learn how to be a great dad, because you can be a great dad. But you need to ask God's help on that. Now, let me briefly look at five types of authority that are really good, that can build up children and help you be a great dad. Now, the first type of authority is, that helps, you, that helps your children is an authority that listens. If you learn how to listen to your children and your wife before you make a decision, you will produce respect for your authority and respect for your decision making. God has full authority, but he listens. He listens. Now, the second type of authority is what I would call predictable discipline. For example, in any sport like football, basketball, soccer, every player knows the rules and what happens if you break those rules before you actually even go play the game. That's predictable discipline. A good dad establishes predictable discipline in their house. It teaches their children the rules and the consequences if you break those rules, even before they get in trouble. In other words, predictable discipline. Now, the third type of authority that can build up children is what I would call gradual freedom. To prepare your children to be independent in the future. To, to prepare your children for the future, which is only going to become harder for them, you must gradually offer them your trust, and based on that trust, greater freedom. And your children must gradually earn your trust and greater freedom. Life for your children is going to get harder. Life as a child is wonderful. It's pretty easy. As they grow, life gets harder. It's not easier. But you can help them to be better when future gets harder. Now, the fourth type of good authority is a humble authority. A dad that is willing to say to their children, I'm sorry, I was wrong. That's humble. That's humility. And he will earn his children's respect and teaching them how to be humble by your example of humility is huge. Now, the fifth and the final type of good authority is what I would call sacrificial authority. In today's second reading from Romans chapter 5, verse 7, look at what St. Paul wrote. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, 
Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. Wow. Are you willing to die for anyone? That is a question. Is there someone in your life you're willing to die for? Look at the next verse, Romans 5, 8, then says this. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, it's pretty rare to find someone who's willing to give his life for another. But here's a big question to all the dads here present. Can you find the courage to die for your children? They're listening, okay? Yes or yes? <laughs> Can you find the courage to die for your children? What's the answer? Good. Are you willing to die for your children, even if they're not saints, even if they're huge sinners? Yes or yes? Yes? Okay. Final question. Are you willing to change your behavior to be a better dad for love of your children? Yes or no? Yes? Good. That's what God is calling you to do today. If your answer is yes, then that proves that you truly love your children. And that proves that your authority reflects whose authority? God's authority. The supreme authority. So in summary, the five types of authority that can build up your children and make you great dads, I would say is authority that listens, that is predictable, that is gradually freeing, that is humble, and that is sacrificial. Now, these characteristics describe exactly and beautifully the authority of Jesus Christ, especially in his Eucharistic presence. And for that, at this moment, I want to welcome once again Pablo Sandoval, who will speak to us about perpetual adoration. Pablo, welcome back. Thank you very much, Father. Good